well, things aren't working today. There's nothing I can do about it. That browser screen, that's supposed to be like a browser from the website. It's supposed to be panthelore.com. You're supposed to be able to see it right there. But you can't. It's just a black box because things aren't working. And sometimes things don't work. And there's nothing I can do. I can't throw my computer and everything else out the window because I still have to do these videos. It's the morning pit. It's a Monday. And somebody's corner of their screen has a case of the Mondays. And so does pit recruiting. So we're going to talk a little pit recruiting here to get your week started. It's not going to be good. It's going to be a real Monday kind of talk because Pitt's recruiting right now as a case of the Mondays. Let's talk about it, though, on the Morning Pit, youtube.com slash panthalaircom. It's still not working. I, I, I just keep hoping it's going to, like, pop up at some point during this video that all of a sudden that black screen is going to turn into, like, the headlines from the website, from panthalaircom, like it usually is. But, nope, still not working. That's great. Case of the Mondays. What are you going to do? It's the Morning Pit, though. It's YouTube.com slash PantherLair.com. I'm Chris Peak from PantherLair.com. You know the website, Panther-Lair.com, Pittsburgh.Rivals.com, which is not providing me a browser feed for the upper right-hand corner of the uh, of our uh, you know recording software right now. So thank you, PantherLair.com, but everything seems to be working and operational on the site, so it's just a problem with our uh, recording right now. What are you going to do? But you know the website, Panther-Lair.com, Pittsburgh.Rivals.com, the most comprehensive source of pit sports news on the internet, football, basketball, and recruiting. You find it all at PantherLair.com and message boards uh, where you can talk with other pit fans all day, every day. Pit fans on the message boards at Panther-Lair.com, Pittsburgh.Rivals.com, talking about pit sports and everything that's going on in the world of pit sports. Uh, you know, whether it's basketball stuff, it's recruiting stuff, it's football stuff, it's other stuff, volleyball, wrestling, all those kinds of things. People were talking about it at panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com for the pit sports uh, conversation. And then, of course, our YouTube channel right here. It's where we put all of our pit video content. Uh, and usually it's got a browser window up in the corner during these morning pit videos that we do every day of the week, Monday through Friday. That's really, really bugging me and it's uh, i i mean it's not the website's not working the website's working just fine uh, but as i say uh we do these morning pit videos monday through friday uh just to get your day started a little bit of pit sports talk we have our weekly live show that we do every wednesday night at eight o'clock this week it will be, it'll be a little bit later because pits at nc state on wednesday night so we'll do that as a post game show don't forget about that we'll go live after the game to talk about what you saw in the pit nc state game and then we do uh, other post-game shows, all, all the road games. We do post-game shows. So we'll have one Wednesday night. Next week when they play at Virginia, we'll do one after that game. They've only got four more home games left, a bunch of road games, and then the postseason, ACC tournament, whatever else might come after. We will have live post-game shows right here at YouTube.com slash PantheLairCom. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of it, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you can turn on notifications. And you'll get an alert sent to your phone every time we go live. So you'll never miss any of our Live streams here at panthalaircom or at uh, youtube.com slash panthalaircom. I think that some of the most fun stuff we do is the live streams, and I'm sure you would like to be a part of it, but I'd like you to be a part of it. So you should try to tune in and check it out. Wednesday night after the game will be the next uh, opportunity to do so. And hopefully you decide to join us. It's still not working. Work! Come on! <sighs> anyway, pit recruiting. This, all right, why are we talking about Pitt recruiting today? Uh, because Pitt lost a local recruit, Alex Tash, Tash, something like that. I, I, I never really got the pronunciation of his name down. Linebacker from Latrobe, 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 whatever. He's going to Penn State. And he is now the third Whippeal recruit in the 2025 recruiting class. Those are the guys who are juniors right now. They'll have one more season of high school football, and then they'll move on to college. He's the third Western PA Whippeal guy to go to Penn State. Tyke Hayes, the running back from uh, Aliquippa, and Brady O'Hara, the tight end, maybe offensive lineman in college at North Catholic. They're all going to uh, Penn State in this 2025 recruiting class. 
And, and we talked about recruiting a little bit last week. We talked about Pennsylvania recruiting and how Pitt has still gotten a lot of Pennsylvania recruits, uh, uh, nine years, nine recruiting classes under Pat Narduzzi. He's signed, nine, I think, nine full recruiting classes. He signed 41 guys from the state of Pennsylvania. It's the most, most of any state, although Florida's right behind it, number 40. And to be quite honest, I wouldn't be surprised if Florida actually passes Pennsylvania. Uh, after the 2025 recruiting class, they signed a bunch of guys, a bunch of in-state guys in the 2024 class, two guys locally, and then a couple more, uh, you know, from outside the local area, uh, a couple offensive linemen, uh, you know, running back, you know, they, they, they added a bunch of numbers from Pennsylvania in this 2024 recruiting class, the guys who will be coming in and, you know, as freshmen in the fall, but they're, you know, that end, you know, that, 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 with all of those guys, it puts Pennsylvania one player ahead of Florida in terms of where Pat Narduzzi has gotten, you know, has filled out his roster over the last nine years. And um, chances are, like if my expectations and predictions are, act, are are correct, by the end of the 2025 recruiting cycle, it's going to end up being even more heavily tilted toward Florida. I, I think Florida will surpass Pennsylvania. That could be my prediction in the 3 2 1 column. If I still remember this by next Friday, Jim's writing it this week, but when I write it next Friday, the 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 one prediction section of the 3 2 1 column will probably be that Pitt, you know, ends up with more Florida players than Pennsylvania players by the end of the 2025 recruiting cycle. But that was a conversation we had last week and was about Pennsylvania. And we touched on some Western PA stuff, some Whippeal stuff, but it was largely about the state and in-state recruiting overall. Today it's it's the Whippeal and it's Western PA. And before I sat down to to record this and talk about this, I I I, I took a few minutes and I thought sat back and I was like, okay, well, what do you want to say about Pitt missing on more Whippeal guys? About Pitt potentially and maybe even likely getting shut out in Western PA in this 2025 recruiting class. Like, what do you want to say about that? How are you going to make sense of that? How are you going to explain it? And the reality is. There's there's no way to explain it. There's no way to make sense of it. There's no there's no like new hot take. Well, here's the thing you guys have to understand. They're just getting beat locally, and they've been getting beat locally for years. All right, and you can go back to 2016 when Pitt landed Demar Hamlin, and they flipped Aaron Matthews from Penn State, and they got Kazon Pugh. They said, wow, 2016, they are rolling. And before that class even signed, they got a commitment from Paris Ford in the next year's class, and. Boy, howdy, Pat Narduzzi is going to kill it in Western PA. They are going to clean house in the Whippeal. And guess what? That didn't happen. They did well in that 2016 class. And like I said, before that class even signed, they had Paris Ford on board. So it looked like, boy, they are just going to kill it. Except in the 2017 class, they got Ford and they got Gabe Hoy and pretty much nobody else. And, and, and actually, I shouldn't say pretty much nobody else. They got nobody else. They got Ford and they got Hoy. And everybody else that they wanted and everybody else that they pursued went elsewhere. Three of them went to Notre Dame. David Adams and Kurt Heinisch and Josh Lug. A bunch went to Penn State. C.J. Thorpe, Lamont Wade. Uh, I feel like there might have been one or two more. Donna Vegeta went to Michigan. They, they didn't get shut out that year because they got arguably the best overall prospect. In, in the area, in in Paris Ford. But they might as well have gotten shut out because he was pretty much the only guy they got. Now, Gabe Hoy ended up being a good player. I don't want to dismiss that, but in terms of the priority guys, the four-star guys, the high-target guys that were getting recruited by a lot of schools, I mean, they got Paris Ford and that was it. And you move forward and you could go through the 18 class and the 19 class. Uh, you know, 2019, I mean, Kai Wright was from Farrell. That's Western PA. They signed Will Gibson from Aliquippa, and that was it. 2020, they signed Dayon Hayes, and that was it. 2021, they had a good class locally. Elliot Donald, and Stephon Hall, and the Kai Johnson, Dorian Ford. That was a good class. And even then, they still missed out on Donovan McMillan and Derek Davis. 2022, they signed Sean Fitzsimmons. That's it. That's That's the list. Like you, you wait for me to say another name, but I'm not going to say another name. Just like in 2023, they signed Cruz Brookins. That's all. That's it. And Cruz Brookins was a late ad. They took it. They offered him in like November and took you know right. They offered him at the end of November. 
a couple of weeks before signing day. Actually, maybe it was even into the first week of December. They offered him very late in the process. And he was the only Western PA guy to sign with Pitt in that class. This year, they got two, Julian Duggar and Ty Juhas. So if you look over the last three recruiting classes, after after that big one in 2021 with Elliot Donald, Nakai Johnson, and Dorian Ford, wow, man, the best class of defensive linemen in the Whippeal, and I don't even know, maybe ever. It was a great class, and they got all those guys right after they got Dayon Hayes the year before. You know, Donald, and Nakai, they were beating Penn State and all these schools for him, and they were rolling in the Whippeal, man. They were rolling in Western PA. And they went out that following season after the, you know signing those guys as freshmen, and they went out that following season. They won the ACC. They won 11-3, and three, and they signed one recruit from the Whippeal. Uh, you couldn't have more momentum than Pitt had at that point, and they signed one guy. Now, I'm always the one who says that the, the you know, a, a current season impacts the next year's recruiting class. So as they were winning the ACC championship in 2021, they were, they were signing the class of 2022, but that real impact will come the following year. Well, the following year, they signed Cruz Brookins. And that was it from the Whippeal. It was the only guy they signed in the 2023 class from the Whippeal, from Western PA. So much for that impact. And I know people have often given me a hard time about talking about, you know, recruiting bumps and how there, there's going to be a recruiting bump. And, oh, they'll, they'll, you know, when they when they win the, you know, they, they win the, uh, the ACC and it's going to really get them a big push. Well, they missed on Rodney Gallagher in that class. They didn't get uh, Tamir Robinson in that class. I'm trying to see. I, I thought there was one more. Well, they signed Braylon Lovelace. I'm sorry. I said Cruz Brookins was the only one. They signed Braylon Lovelace. I'm sorry. No, uh, all uh, apologies to, to Braylon. So they got two guys. Cruz Brookins and Braylon Lovelace. They missed on the two biggest ones. Rodney Gallagher and Tammy Robinson. So in the last three years, after signing that big class in 2021, they have signed five guys in the last three recruiting classes from Western PA. And now it continues into this 2025 class with Alex Tash going to Penn State and Tyke Hayes going to Penn State and Brady O'Hara going to Penn State. And, and you know, I, we're already... Like almost 13 minutes into this video, I'm sure there are lots of comments about how Pitt doesn't need the Whippeal and you can't build a roster out of the Whippeal. You got to get guys from outside the area. Pitt needs to focus its efforts on Florida and Georgia. And they are, and they have, and you're right. You can't build your entire roster from the Whippeal. You need, you know, you can't try to, you know, just live with Whippeal guys. You you need to fill out your roster from all over the country, from Maryland, from DC, Virginia, Florida, Georgia. These are places to go these are places to try to recruit guys they're trying to make inroads in texas i guess you know you need to go to ohio you need to go to new jersey you need to go to new york and try and find good players in new england but if there are good players in your backyard if there are good players in western pennsylvania you need to get more of them than you miss on and Pitt hasn't gotten more than they missed on since 2021 and the situation is getting worse not better because there's a very realistic chance that Pitt gets shut out in the Whippeal this year. Very realistic shot of that. Unless they end up offering somebody late or they offer somebody they haven't offered already. If Of the guys that they've already offered, and I think they've offered six players in the Whippeal, I really don't know if Pitt's going to get any of them. They've already missed on like half of them. And the three or four that are still out there, Either I, I think they're leaning to another school or Pitt might end up moving on from them altogether. It feels like a year where Pitt's probably not going to have much, if any, success locally. And why is that? There's a lot of reasons. And they're reasons that we've talked about a lot over the years. And you can go, I mean, like, take your pick. You know what I mean? Like, shake up a hat. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, here it is. Oh, attendance. Oh, uh, local media, uh, you know, trashes pit. Um, 
oh, everybody's uncle and trainer and cousin thinks that Pitt's not big time enough. Uh, oh, uh, oh, Steelers draw all the attention. Nobody cares. You know, it, it, Pitt, Pitt falls below the Steelers in terms of attention. And, and so it, it doesn't get that big of a draw, you know. Uh, oh, they've lost at least three games every year since like 1981. Uh, oh, they went three and nine last year. I mean, like over and over again. You know, I mean, like it's the same things over and over again, explaining why Pitt can't have more success in Western Pennsylvania. And we'll dispel the myth, as we always do, dispel the myth that there was some magical time when Pitt got everybody from Western Pennsylvania. Maybe that time existed 40 years ago. You know what I mean? Like maybe that time existed prior to the debut of Miami Vice on television. But for the last 30 years, Pitt has not owned the whip eel. Okay, the, the, the great myth of Dave Wanstead and his wall in Western Pennsylvania, it didn't exist. It didn't happen. You can go through every, and I think we did talk about this last week, that you can go through every recruiting class Dave Wanstead signed and find multiple Whippeal targets who got away. So it never existed that Pitt controlled Western Pennsylvania. There's just, uh, the, there are talented players in this area. And if there are talented players, then schools are going to try and come and recruit them. And so if you find yourself regularly running into Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan, and Notre Dame, you're going to lose some guys to Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan, and Notre Dame. And I've always said that like different X factors come into it. Like that 2017 year where Notre Dame took three guys from the Whippeal. Notre Dame never takes three guys from the Whippeal. But because they decided to invest in the whip yield that year, they ended up with a big haul, and that hurt pitch chances to get guys there. And then you you have sort of random schools that pop in and out. There'll be a, a, a Texas A&M, you know, or Texas Tech was involved there, you know, probably 10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, just randomly Texas Tech decided they wanted to get a bunch of whip yield guys. I mean, that didn't work out for anybody, Texas Tech or the kids. Yeah, it's so random schools will pop in and grab guys and it's it's sort of ran out of nowhere, but you're mostly running in to Penn State primarily and then Ohio State and Michigan. And when you run into those schools with what they have to offer, it's a challenge. And, and it's a challenge when you run into those schools and you're recruiting kids in New Jersey or Maryland or Ohio, uh, you know, down into the southeast. It's a challenge when you run into those schools on the recruiting trail. It stings a little more when it happens at home. It stings a little more when it's kids in your backyard. It stings a little more when it's whip eel targets, guys that ideally you've got a relationship with, uh, you know, that you've been recruiting for a while that you should, you know, hope you can keep home. Even if it doesn't always work out. And a lot of times it doesn't. And there's no answer here. You know, uh, uh, you, uh, on the message board, of course, there, there's conversations about this on the message boards at pantheler.com. Somebody said, you know, you need to get somebody with local ties. And that would probably help. But I don't know if you're going to get anyone with local ties that are going to be strong enough that you're going to be able to just grab all the kids you want. You need to win more. Now, winning more would help. That would lead to some success. But pit one more in 2021. In the following recruiting cycle, they couldn't land the two biggest guys in the area. Two guys who were, at one point in their high school careers and recruitments, pit leans, I would say, in Tamir Robinson and Rodney Gallagher. But there's a lot of outside influences. There are a lot of factors that, that go into it. And there are a lot of reasons that these kids pick this school or that school or wherever they end up going. And I don't have one solid answer to it other than when it boils down to it, a lot of these kids look at Pitt and say, I can do better. Now, some of them, like Donovan McMillan and Derek Davis, among others, MJ Devonshire, Phil Dracovic, find out, oh, turns out, I mean, I thought I could do better. and Maybe I can, but there's actually a really good opportunity at home. There's actually a really good opportunity to play close to home uh, in a place where I'm very familiar with and comfortable with uh, where I'd have an opportunity to play. And you look how it worked out. MJ Devonshire made some huge plays. Donovan McMillan 
uh, just had 100 tackles, 100 plus tackles for Pitt. First Pitt player to have 100 plus tackles in a season since like 2015. And to some extent, and, and I mean, this could apply to a lot of recruiting right now. To some extent, if you're Pitt, you keep recruiting the Whippeal hard because it's your backyard. You've got to maintain relationships with high school coaches and all of that kind of thing. But you recruit the local area hard. So when those guys go elsewhere, maybe in a couple of years, they want to transfer back and you've got the relationships already in place. That feels like a loser mentality, but that's just kind of the reality of what the situation is right now. A lot of these kids look at it and say, I can do better. And the result is Pitt's probably going to get shut out in the Whippeal. Which, can't really remember the last time that happened. We'll see if it comes to pass, but can't. I, I, I'd have to do some research to find the last time that happened. So, Pitt's recruiting's got a case of the Mondays. My stupid... Recording software has a case of the Mondays, or maybe it's the browser has a case of the Mondays. Everybody's got a case of the Mondays. The weather was nice this weekend. Still, everybody's bummed out this morning. So, happy Monday to you. <laughs> Sorry, we'll try to have a better attitude about things. Hey, Pitt won on Saturday. We'll have to talk about that tomorrow for sure. We'll talk some basketball, uh, what's going on with the Panthers as they uh, got a little momentum going. Maybe they're hitting their stride was the common phrase used in the post game on Saturday night. Uh, but we'll talk about that tomorrow and get you ready for the NC State game on Wednesday night. Don't forget, we'll have a live post game show after the game on Wednesday night right here at YouTube.com slash So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on notifications. You'll never miss any of our live streams or any of our video content that we post. And while you're at it, also like this video. We'd appreciate that. And then check out the website panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com for all the pit sports coverage. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I appreciate it. Hope you had a great weekend other than uh, the recruiting stuff, but the pit, the pit basketball game was pretty good. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, hope you have a great Monday. Don't uh, hold on to those Mondays too long. We'll uh, catch up with you tomorrow for the morning pit right here on youtube.com slash